Hi everyone and welcome. So today, Thursday, it's, uh, we are two days before uh, Porsche Nitzavim. This is the last Shabbat of uh, this year and it's very important and special Shabbat. You now the the Torah start with the words Atem Nitzavim Hayom Kulchem Lifne Hashem like we all going to stand in front of the Creator. And uh, because of the, it's the last Shabbat of uh, the year, we need to keep in mind that all of the other Shabbats from the past year includes in this specific Shabbat. It's a very powerful uh, of a capsula of energy of light that if we missed one of the Shabbats, we can receive the energy in this Shabbat. And also, if we didn't miss Shabbat, but let's say we did, you know, we didn't do or make our co co uh, connection in the right way, we can correct it in this Shabbat. So one of the things that we want to remind ourselves, you know, when we come into this time of Nitzavim uh, and this time of Elul, we have like a few days before Rosh Hashanah, that this time, it's a time that we can all listen to our soul. You know, the universe is open, everything is open. In the 1% level, we can be bothered by the 1% world and with the noise of the 1%. And this is the illusion. This is that kind of the conflict we need to deal with every day. You know, we can feel that there's not enough time at the day or hours at the day and we're running after ourselves all the time to finish the tasks but because it's a blessing we need to make those stops during the day during the week and listen to our soul because in that time our soul is talking to us our soul doesn't want to continue to the next year in the same behavior we have this year because our soul know the potential that the soul have. Our soul knows exactly why we came here and what we need to do. So our soul telling us what we need to do, what we need to clean in order for us to be ready for the next year. So I'm just going to read something from Av Ashlag just as a reminder. And then we give some more consciousness about this uh, special Shabbat. So Rav Ashlag reminding us why this world being created. <laughs> because in the time of Rosh Hashanah, we know the world going to be, we're going to be born again. As the as the Torah and the Kabbalists explain that the, the world is being created every day from the beginning. But we know at the Rosh Hashanah is the time that Adam and Eve been born. It's mean like all the souls been born. So I was like saying, you know, to understand that, <coughs> we need to remind ourselves that the, that something that creates something, there is a reason why he creates what he creates. And just the, the ones that they not having like a straight uh, mind or a balanced thoughts, they, they can think that, you know, the creator created this world with no purpose. Just, you know, he created the world and left, left us here to do whatever. He says, Rabbi Shlak, There are some in this world that they can actually can feel that they are wise, but they're talking about the, the mitzvot, the precept and the Torah, not in the right way. And they're saying that the Creator create all of this existence and left it, you know, with no... Supervision. Because they think, you know, that because we are in such a low place, or you see all of the chaos, and the, and the light is very powerful, so he doesn't really, it's not in, in his, um, let's say, um, owner or respect to, to deal with us because we are in the lowest level. So he's saying, but they're they talking like that or they thinking like that or behaving like that. 
because they don't know. They don't have the right intention, the right consciousness about it. He lo itachen leachlit al shfiluto, al shfilutenu veafsutenu miterem shenachlit veanachnu asinu et atzmenu veet kol otviim ankulkalim vamgunim shebanu. He says we can think and to judge ourselves about everything that we say about ourselves till we go on to decide that everything that happened to us it's because our negative nature that we created, that we did, not the creator, not because of the uh, universe, not because of creation, that we create, we did. Because again, remember, we have the free will and we can choose right now. I want to eat the sugar, yes or no? I want to do a good deed, yes or no? I want to come to the class, yes or no? I want to scan the Zohar, yes or no? I want to do the Mekor, yes or no? Everything, you know, we have free will. So I want the light, I don't want the light. I have to remind myself. But when we deciding that the Creator, He is the one that creates everything in a perfect way, in a perfect way, and He correct our bodies, our physical bodies, with all of the <coughs> good or the bad that we have in our life, but even though we have, we have good and bad, so the creator is perfect. It can be he, he can create something that is not perfect. And each action that the creator created this world shows on the power and the perfection of the creator. And why we we blaming the creator with a damaged clothing? If there is a, a tailor that he did mistake and he and he did uh, he didn't uh, took the wrong <coughs> measurement and create a wrong suit. So now we're going to blame the creator or we're going to blame the tailor? So we know that we are the tailors according to our actions. Because the light given us like a perfect scenario to do our correction. But every time we do in a short circuit and we create like, you know, negativities into our life, sometimes or many times without saying it or saying it, we blame in the creator. We blame in creation. We don't understand like why it's happened to me, why I need to go through this movie. But in the endless, we have everything. Here, we not maybe, maybe feeling that we have everything, because of our actions. And here I like want to remind us <clears throat> that the creator create this world for one reason. Lehetiv lenivra'av. And that we need to engrave in our brain, in our heart. Because while we're changing, we want to take this energy with us to the next year. And to remind ourselves when we have good times or we have bad times or difficult times, the creator created this world for one reason, that I will have the most fulfillment that I need to have to help me to do my correction. It means whatever I need, happiness, health, wealth, whatever we need to do our correction. So from the point of the creator, he created this world, this universe, and give us everything we need to be fulfilled. This is from the point of the creator. From my point of view, my life or the world, if I don't feel it, if I don't have it, I can't blame the creator. I can just look within and check where in my life there are places I'm not doing and I'm supposed to do, or when in my, where in my life there are things I'm not supposed to do and I'm still doing them. Let's take responsibility. And this is this month. This is why the soul telling us <clears throat> the truth. Maybe we don't want to see it because it's hard. It's hard to listen to the truth. We don't like the truth. We said, yeah, tell me the truth. But when someone telling the truth, we, like, we don't like it. Really? This is what you think of me? I thought you are my best friend. I thought you are my teacher. I thought, I thought, I thought. What do you mean you thought? You asked for the truth? This is the truth. This man... This is the truth. 
Maybe we, want, we don't want to listen to the truth, but the soul telling us the truth, telling us the truth, the, the light sending us messengers to tell us the truth. So we can we can get upset, we can get angry, we can fight back, we can do whatever we want. But this is the truth. But it's a gift. I want to change, I don't want to change. I want to continue to next year with most of my garbage or with empty vessel, clean vessel, because I want more. I want to feel and to stay connected, to connect and to stay connected with the fulfillments of the Creator. I want to cleave myself with that thought of creation, the, the, the thought of creation from the point of the Creator, just to do good with His creations. Just to do good. So I want to taste it. I want to feel it 24-7. And one thing, you know, from many things of this parasha, of this weekend, week, that's when we, that Moshe Rabbeinu is telling us all of those things before he leaves in the world, before he going to stand in front of the Creator. And we know when the soul leaves the world, the soul is standing in front of the Creator to give the report. So one of the, the, the tricks we need to start to work with, especially now, we're going to meditate every day, and also we can do it the entire year, even the next year. Something that Ethan, Ethan Yardeni, I heard, listened to one of his um, consciousness classes this week. Very powerful, very, very um, a, a new, you know, like energy. Think about it from that point. And right now, this Shabbat and Til Rosh Hashanah, we're all going to stand in front of the Creator. When, when we stand in front of the Creator, <clears throat> usually it's before the person it's when the person leaves the world. Because right now we finish a year and we're going to be born again. So it means, imagine, that forbid, the person leaves in the world and he be born again. So we're going to stand in front of the Creator. When we're in front of the Creator, think about it. Do we care about what people say about us, don't say about us? I have, uh, you know, different type, different type of tasks to finish during the day. I finished them, I didn't finish them. Stress, no stress, pay the bills, no pay the bills. All this 1% noise. You really think we're going to have it in the upper world? You really think in the upper world, we can blame someone? We can judge someone? Of course not. It says the Zohar, when the soul leaves the world, if the soul doesn't have enough good deeds, because the soul knows the truth, the soul, the soul feels shame. Because the soul knows the truth why the soul came to the world. And the soul sees and feels, or oh, if we can use those terms, that the soul didn't do enough and didn't fulfill the mission. And that moment the soul doesn't think about who said, what said, in which case, he loved me, he doesn't love me. All of that noise around us in the 1% world doesn't exist when the soul leaves the world. This parasha, this weekend, this Torah reading, if you can make it and come physically or you can listen at Kabbalah.com, it's very important. From now, from today, take this point, very powerful point, till Rosh Hashanah and after Rosh Hashanah, continue for the entire year because if we can feel like that, we can change our life and we can have more certainty and we can receive more blessings because why? When the person is about to leave the world, you think the person care about who said what? You think he have calculation in his mind? When a person is sick and he's in bed, you think he cares about what people say or doesn't say? He doesn't care about nothing. Money, no money. What he cares just to be healthy again. That's to have the strength in his body to stand up and to walk and to go back to work and to see his kids, his wife, his friends, to study, whatever that, that mean to the person. But he's just thinking about just to be healthy. Suddenly, all of the noise of the 1% disappear because right now, what you can do? So when we're taking ourselves in that time, kulchem nitzavim hayom, today, you're all going to stand in front of the Creator today, not tomorrow, not in the past, it says the, the Torah, today, every day, we need to feel like that. I'm standing now in front of the Creator. So all of the 1% noise need to disappear. All of the worries, all of the judgmental thoughts, the blaming thoughts, who said, who going to say, 
He want to do it. He doesn't want to do it. He love me. Doesn't love me. I don't care. I came here to fulfill my mission. I came here to help my soul to do it correction. I want to cleave myself with the creator. I want to cleave myself with the thoughts of creation. I want to cleave myself with that energy. The creator just wants to give me and fulfill me with good. <laughs> and if I don't feel it, it means, it means to me I'm doing something wrong. Let me check what I'm doing wrong. And I want to change that. Because when we will do that, what will happen every day, because it's a new day and new blessings, every day I'm going to make sure not to let the 1% to control me. Now, it doesn't mean the 1% I don't need to work and make money and pay bills. Of course, yes. But it depends how I'm doing it, with which consciousness. If I'm more connected or disconnected from the light. If I will take this exercise and start to train my brain, I'm doing let go about the noise. And anyway, I'm doing my work, but from from more connected place to the creator, more happy place. And, and you know what? It might be we're going to start to enjoy more and more the, the, the time of doing the work in the 1%, even though there are very stressful times in our life. But when I'm connected and have certainty in the creator, the light will fulfill me and give me more strength to overcome those obstacles. Another thing that we need to start to keep in mind, every time we're doing something, if you read the Zohar, Anna Bekoach, good deed, give tithing, give donations, volunteering, all of those things, spiritual things we are doing, we want to ask and to say, I don't want just because, I was explain we can do it in an external way or in an inter internal way. When, do, when we're doing something physically in this world, the things that we mentioned before, we have to keep in mind the internal energy, the spiritual energy. So I want to, to say to myself, because of that action I, I'm doing right now, I'm going to be more close to the creator. It's going to bring me more closer to the creator because I want to cleave myself with the light. Or if you want to change something or you need something in your life, because of that action, I'm going to receive that thing. So every time we take in any actions, we want to put the right intention before. You know, the highest level of intention that I want to be closer to the light. I want to fulfill my mission and to make sure that to prepare my vessel, that the light can dwell in my vessel and the light will guide me. So let's take, you know, those points from the Kabbalist. Beautiful, beautiful. I think like amazing points that we can focus our energy and start from now, not from tomorrow, from today, today, from now. Everything that you are doing, you tell into yourself, because of that good deed, because of that action, I'm going to be more closer to the, the creator. I'm going to fulfill my mission. I'm going to have the thoughts of creation. You inject in like energy that that action will remove the barriers and cleave us with the light of the creator, give us the certainty, and also to remember to do it the next day, not just today. If I did it today, it means I need to do it also tomorrow and tomorrow and, and the other day, the other day. So the entire year, if we can keep that thought in our mind and we think like this is our last day or this is the day that we're standing in front of the creator, really we need to ask ourselves, what is really important right now in that moment? When we bring, when we bring in ourselves from the past and from the future and we are at the present time, what is really important right now? If just this moment is important, how I should act right now and what thoughts and intention I supposed to have right now. And most of the time we will find out just positive things because that's what matter right now. So let's take this energy, this light and that support from above and let's use it. Don't think about it, just let's meditate. Let's use it. At la sot, saying, it's time to manifest. It's time to do. Okay? Good luck for all of us.
So let's uh, open our mics and let's uh, share Shabbat Shalom. Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, Shabbat Shalom, miracles and wonders, amen, amen.